Hello everyone, bringing you the Mannequin of the Month for November 2020 today. Obviously, as is usual with these, the topic has been picked via a poll over on Patreon where the corporal tier gets a vote on exactly what we're going to talk about each month. And the topic chosen is British infantrymen on exercise in the UK in 1942 in training. A somewhat neglected topic, the period between Dunkirk and the Normandy landings in 1944 is somewhat neglected in terms of training within the UK. Obviously, there's a lot going on elsewhere uh, in the world, uh, but training in the UK is a topic that's not often covered. And it's relatively interesting. The kit, as I say, is certainly looking at it here on the mannequin. You may think you've seen very similar to this before, but certain elements are, are different. And we'll, uh, we'll talk about that. There's sort of a slow progression of kit being introduced to so new, new respirator haversacks, new ammunition pouches and so forth. So we'll talk about that as we uh, move the mannequin around. Starting at the top, as we normally do, we have here the standard Mark II steel helmet. Um, as I say, nothing changed there, really. You do occasionally see uh, decals insignia worn on these flashes on the side. That's occasionally seen around this time period. There'd been a general move to uh, more insignia in 1940. You'd had the reintroduction of divisional formation signs and so forth. However, as we'll look at this, uh, as we'll see as we look at this moving it round, this is very generic. There's actually no insignia on this at all, which is still very common to see in the field, in training and so forth in the UK at this time. Moving down, dominating the front of the mannequin here, we have a Mark 7 respirator haversack, basically the, the newest version of the haversack and the last version of the haversack for the general service respirator, worn up on the chest there at the alert. And then lower down, we can see the webbing here, the two ammunition pouches, the two basic pouches for the 1937 pattern web equipment. These are both Mark IIs, which would, generally speaking, be the most common type to see at this time period. Obviously the web belt there, and you can see the L straps coming down with the haversack, of course, worn on the back. The uniform itself is the blouse from the 1940 pattern, uh, battle dress suit. So that is to say, concealed buttons, pleated pockets, the lined collar and slight change to the cut. There's incremental changes to battle dress at this time, one of which is obviously the addition of a lined collar, which had taken place. Uh, and this would now be the sort of standard uh, production type. Uh, you'd move over to the utility, obviously starting in 1942. So that will begin to make an appearance on the scene. So that's the front of the mannequin. We'll turn this around now and have a look at the left-hand side. Okay, so moving this round here, we can see a side profile of the equipment, the basic pouch at the front here. We've got the haversack on the back, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Sleeve of the battle dress here, you can see there's no insignia there. Still common to see at this time. Armour service strips, divisional signs and so forth have been introduced by this point, very much in use. They do turn up in some photographs, but particularly if soldiers in the field and in training, you're not wearing your best battle dress. Very common still to see no insignia worn. And of course, there were orders in place for men going overseas to remove insignia. So, as I say, that's uh, something that does show up in period photographs too. And of course, that makes this very generic. There's no actual regimental or divisional details or anything there, and not even your arm of service strip showing your position within the brigade. So, as I say, plain, clean battle dress there, no insignia. We lift the arm out of the way. You can see the strap coming around for the haversack there, for the L strap. You can see here on the hip, we have the bayonet for the, uh, the rifle number one Mark III star, obviously, still very much in use at this time and carried in the standard 1937 pattern frog down on the hip there and that indicates the weapon obviously that this man would be carrying. Looking at the back of the equipment here we can see the haversack is worn high on the back obviously in battle order so carried on the L straps on the back there and we have the Mark 7 ground sheet rolled and folded underneath the flap there to give some weatherproofing. Not particularly heavily loaded it's not been crammed with lots of bits and pieces you can see in the video I made, looking at the contents of the haversack, I'll put a card to that in the corner of the video here, different ways this can be loaded. And certainly in the field in the UK at this time, you wouldn't be carrying ration packs in the mess tins necessarily. You'd be more likely to be receiving food from centralized cooking or issue, issued a haversack ration, which is something else that's been covered in a separate video. Again, I'll put a card to that in the corner here as well. So not particularly heavily loaded in this instance, would depend, of course, on the specific training and specific operations you're involved with at the time. One thing I almost forgot to mention, looking at the back of the mannequin here, you'll notice that the gas cape is not carried across the shoulders, and that's simply based on the reference photos used to reference this mannequin. The gas cape was not being carried in that instance. Underneath the belt here, we have the reappearance of the two-part entrenching tool. This, of course, dates back, its use with the British Army dates back to prior to the First World War, essentially introduced alongside the 1908 pattern web equipment. 
It was taken out of service in the interwar period by the British Army. The Royal Navy seemed to have kept it on. But at the start of the Second World War, the British Army essentially didn't have an entrenching tool. So you'd see the 1939 pattern appear really in 1940, the short shovel type entrenching tool, again covered in a separate video. Card to that in the corner here, should you wish to go and have a look at that. At this time period, the two-part entrenching tool had been reintroduced as the standard entrenching tool for the British Army, and that's what we have here in the cover, hanging below the belt on the brace ends here, as you can see. And obviously the cover, uh, the change that had been made to the cover, obviously you have the helve carried across the cover, whereas it had been carried separately on the 1908 pattern web equipment. Simply putting two loops on the cover there means you can carry the entrenching tool helve across the back of the cover there. That's the back, we'll have a look at the right hand side now. Looking at the right hand side, I'll just lift the arm of the battle dress out of the way here. And you can see we have the enamel water bottle in its webbing carrier here. A move away from the skeleton type, still, in, still around at this time of course, but a move had been made in manufacture by some companies to a sleeve type, which was made in short and taller varieties, depending on the webbing stock used. We have a shorter example here. Some of them, of course, would come up to the top and, and hide the whole bottle. Just a variation in manufacture and the webbing stock used to manufacture them. So, as I say, we have here uh, the short sleeve type carrier. A real mix would be in use at this time, of course. Lots of companies being brought into webbing manufacturing. Manufacturing uh, variations were becoming more apparent. So you'd have different ways of making the braces and so forth, simplified ways of making the braces for companies that couldn't do things like the reduction woven method of manufacturing them that, that mills have been using uh, in the early war and pre-war period. So again, you're seeing that come in at this time period as well. Already very much in production, but it would be very common at this time period to see lots of different bits and pieces of webbing and it's not all going to match, of course. Um, so there we are. That's a, a look at the, the water bottle carried around on the right hip here. The webbing essentially set up in a fairly standard configuration, as is to be expected. So there we are. I hope you found it interesting looking at this. As I say, this is set up to represent troops in a training scenario in the UK, so on exercise in the field. And this is the sort of kit that was being worn in 1942 in the mid-war period. So as I say, I thought it'd be interesting to run through this. It's a somewhat neglected area. Uh, that people don't necessarily think about as much. Obviously, there's a lot going on in the rest of the world at this time, and training in the UK is somewhat forgotten about. But this is fairly typical and obviously fairly generic in terms of looking at kit from that time period. If you wanted to re represent a specific regiment or so, and so forth, you'd need to look at the weapons they were using and so forth, try and look at original photographs. That's always the best way to do it. Um, but this is something relatively generic. Uh, and as I say, fairly typical of that time period. I hope you found it interesting running through this. If you have, and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, little notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, you can. There's both Patreon and PayPal linked down below. A massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel over there and obviously on Patreon, uh, on the corporal tier over there, you can vote each month on the topic that's going to be covered as the mannequin of the month. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. There's Facebook, Instagram and Twitter all linked down below. But if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is, an, of course, an email address down there as well. But that's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.